this is the perfect place to begin our lesson on education justice. Hear that sound? Grab your textbooks and... America is great, and it's our greatness that makes us great. But what makes us as individuals so great, you might ask? Why, it's our world-class free public and education system. D is for the daughters of the Confederacy, without whom we never would have had standardized textbooks teaching the rich history of this country. E is for equality. Equality in education means each individual is given the same resources and opportunities, no matter his background. All will receive the same. H is for Horace Mann. Thanks to the ABCs of Education Justice, young people are taught to be productive citizens, a productive workforce, keeping America great. The history of education in America is the history of America, with liberty and education justice for all. Great speech, really, but uh, isn't education justice more about making sure every student has equitable chance to succeed in school? You, uh, uh, <clears throat> I mean, uh, <laughs> hello, young person. Uh, while I love your enthusiasm, everyone already does. Every child in America has the legal right to a good old-fashioned American free public education. Uh, yeah. We are all in the same free public school system. Great, another one. <laughs> Hello and welcome! But, depending on your race, class, gender, or even health, your experience may vary. Let's start with the fact that every student has different and individual needs. Earlier, you mentioned equality, everyone having access to the same resources and opportunities. But in practice, those resources tend to go to those who need them the least. In an equitable system, everyone would get support tailored to their individual needs, ensuring that students, regardless of background, can easily achieve their academic goals and have supportive communities behind them. Beyond equity is justice. Imagine a system where the barriers to education are removed, or even further beyond, where all people are included in making decisions about their education. Earlier you mentioned the Daughters of Confederacy and their campaign to distribute textbooks. The thing about those textbooks... After the American Civil War ended, Southern historians started preserving Southern perspectives. These ideas became known as the Lost Cause of the Confederacy. The Lost Cause, a distorted version of American history, has three basic tenets. The Confederate fight was heroic, enslaved people were happy, and the slavery wasn't the root cause of the war. The UDC was founded in Nashville in 1884 by the daughters of the elitist Southern families, determined to preserve Confederate culture. You may know those Confederate monuments, yeah, that was the daughters of the Confederacy. Those monuments may be their more visible work, their most effective work was with children. Essentially, the UDC used their political clout and influence to ensure that textbooks in the South only depicted the Confederacy in a positive light. Essentially teaching kids that the Confederacy causes were just... These efforts shaped the identities of the children who grew up in the South in this era. Generations of children taught these ideas eventually grow up to be segregationists of the 1950s and 60s. So when you're disturbed by the numerous yearbooks and college photos of white politicians dressed in blackface or as a member of the KKK, know that those people were taught to embrace the darkest parts of American history as a positive. Second, let's address the elephant in the room, the school to prison pipeline. Structures of codes and punishments that criminalizes kids as early as preschool increase their chances of ending up in the criminal justice system. See, way back in the 1900s. Crime was all the rage in the media, dominating news cycles, and as a result, public schools respond with zero tolerance policies. Mandating suspensions and expulsions for violation ranging from violence to talking back and uniform violations. Doubling out-of-school suspension rates compared to the 1970s even though juvenile crime rates had plummeted and was continuing to do so. Between 1997 and 2007, 
more and more full-time police officers were stationed inside schools. On the surface, they were there to prevent mass school shootings like Columbine. But in practice, it was a way for schools to outsource discipline. Students are punished and dismissed from school through suspensions and expulsions, essentially keeping kids out of school and uneducated and more likely to end up in the juvenile justice system. Now listen here. I will hear no bad-mouthing of the American education system. These wild ideas about the racist history of this country. How can we expect young people to grow up with pride in themselves if they are being bogged down by guilt because of the way things used to be? But that is exactly our point. This inequity didn't stay in the past. We are living in the result of all of these things. How can you expect young people to be informed citizens when the curriculum is built to hide the foundations of our history? Not addressing the darkest parts of American history, the same history that institutional racism is built on, is robbing us all of the context. Why can't we give the youth the opportunity to learn from the past mistakes? We start with books that teach and challenge the mistakes of the past, qualified teachers who earn a livable wage, and safe schools for everyone. Exactly! It's about addressing deeper issues like the lack of resources and discrimination that affects students' ability to learn. As adult allies, we should also strive to be advocating for policies and changes that help all students, no matter where they come from. The classroom could be the best place to begin exemplifying equity because education often often reflects and perpetuates oppressive systems. Disparities among schools mirror disparities between communities. That is to say, the obstacles students of color or lower income households face in the class are also obstacles that they face every day in their daily lives. And without the proper support from teachers and staff, students are left to figure out how to navigate that world on their own. Not to mention that unprecedented events like COVID-19 exacerbated underlying disparities in education, especially for youth in rural areas and low-income families. And young people often have little say in designing the systems that shape their lives. But despite these challenges, young people are speaking up and advocating for a more just and equitable education system. In our vision of education justice, every student has a role in creating culturally and cognitively appropriate tools and support they need to pursue their dreams and talents. Teachers, counselors, and administrators are highly trained, valued, and deeply invested in building school communities that center whole person learning and well being for each student. Students have access to the best equipment and technology, broadband is available to everyone, environments at school and at home are set up to support learning. I see. You're making a lot of sense to me. Please tell me more about your vision. Social emotional learning through strong trusting relationships fosters a deep sense of belonging. Mental health support is built into school routines, including mindfulness practices and quiet spaces to process. Classes are small, content is engaging, and includes multiple perspectives. Curricula shares an accurate, unflinching version of history and prepares youth for life beyond school. Most importantly, schools draw on youth resilience and brilliance by partnering with students to ensure that systems continue to provide the education that young people want and deserve. Student advocacy councils exist for all grade levels, and youth sit at the decision-making table with school districts, city councils, and county supervisors. Ultimately, in our hope for the future of education justice, students are allowed to thrive in safe and fulfilling environments where they are seen and heard by administrators who see the potential of the future generations.